Hi, welcome. In this video, I want to talk about why women's bodies seem to dry up like the Sahara Desert in Middle Age and what we can do about it. Now, this phenomenon affects the entire body from head to toe, but for the sake of time, I want to put focus on dry skin and dry eyes. Both are extremely common in most middle-aged women because perimenopause is present in all middle-aged women and the erratic hormones cause all sorts of problems. My channel is full of videos dedicated to many of these perimenopause symptoms. All are annoying and can affect quality of life, but the body-wide dryness and itching are two of the more irritating and torturous ones. In the case of dry eyes, low levels of estrogen and progesterone cause glandular changes, which cause your eyes to be less lubricated. Doesn't sound like much of a problem, does it? But for those of you ladies out there who suffer from chronic dry eyes, you understand how completely horrid this problem actually is. Not having the proper amount of oil and tears can be very irritating and sometimes painful. It can leave your eyes feeling very itchy, gritty, red, and burning. It sometimes feels like you permanently have sand in your eyes or pink eye. You go to sleep at night and when you wake up in the morning, your eyelids are sometimes almost glued shut. And when you finally do manage to pry them open, you have to blink a few dozen times to try and clear the blur. Everything looks hazy for about 10 minutes because your eyes are so painfully dry. And frequent infections can also come to join the party because dry eyes cannot wash away debris efficiently. I personally suffer from dry eyes and I can tell you ladies, it is torturous. It is actually painful and affects my vision. I have to make sure to see an eye doctor at least once a year to make sure that the dryness isn't actually causing damage to my eyes and more often if eye infections occur. I also find that if I have a particularly bad week with eye dryness that it actually causes headaches for me. If you personally suffer from dry eyes during perimenopause or menopause, what can you do to alleviate the horrible symptoms or at least take them down a notch or two? You would think because it's hormonally based that replacing or rebalancing hormones would cure it. But funny enough, HRT does not appear to ameliorate dry eyes and actually can make the problem worse. The first step in managing your dry eyes, obviously, is to see your eye doctor regularly. Extreme dry eyes can cause damage, so being followed by an eye doctor regularly is crucial. Next, never ever run out of preservative-free daily drops. You need to keep your eyes well lubricated every single day, and you do not want to be putting drops with preservatives into your eyes several times a day. The preservatives can eventually make eye dryness far, far worse. I like these little individual preservative-free vials. They're really quite handy. And one of these little vials will last me several hours. I just pop the lid back on and prop it somewhere and I use it until the liquid is gone. There are also eye gels available for nighttime use. But for me personally, I found that they irritated my eyes more than helped them. They were very uncomfortable and they severely impacted my vision. So if I used them, I had to make sure that I was going straight to bed and closing my eyes. Not for me, but that's not to say that they may not be beneficial for some of you. Eye masks that you heat in the microwave can also be very beneficial if block ducts are a problem for you. They will help to melt the oil in the ducts and reduce the blockages. They're also good for giving your eyes a break if they're really, really irritating you. I have used the masks in the past and I find them very useful. Punctal plugs are also sometimes used to help the tears remain on the surface of the eyes longer. These tiny little plugs are placed in the tear ducts and help to prevent the tears from washing away, leaving them on the surface of the eyes for a longer period of time. I haven't personally tried punctal plugs, but I am told that they're quite effective. Steroid drops is another option for soothing the inflammation and pain of a flare-up. Although, extended use of steroid drops can cause increased eye pressure or even cataracts. So if you are using steroid drops, make sure that you're being followed by an eye doctor. There are medical eye drops for long-term use that help decrease inflammation and help the body produce more natural tears. It was an option offered to me 
The problem I had with those drops was that it did require long-term use to see an effect and they were expensive. Also, the list of side effects attached to those eye drops was enough to deter me from using them. However, just because that type of treatment was not right for me does not mean that it may not be right for you. If all else fails, you may want to give that type of treatment a try. Similar to dry eyes, decreasing hormones can also cause extreme dryness to the skin. And when I say skin, I mean anywhere that you have skin can and will be affected. Estrogen is related to collagen, which is the natural building block of skin. It is also related to the production of natural oils, which are essential for keeping the skin moisturized. The drop in estrogen during perimenopause and menopause can leave your skin very dry, thin, and itchy. And when I say itchy, I mean everyone is looking at you oddly because you are scratching like you are covered in bugs. That degree of itching is torture, trust me. And the extreme dryness can cause a midlife onset of skin conditions such as eczema. I never had any problems with my skin whatsoever until I became middle-aged. Now, all of a sudden, I'm noticing patches of eczema here and there and weird little hive-like patches here and there. And man, do they itch. Tingling, prickling, and numbness can also occur. So if you don't want to be walking around scratching like a dog with fleas, what can you do? First, make sure to moisturize after every bath or shower. This will help to lock moisture into the outermost layer of skin. Try to use fragrance-free lotions as added chemicals can worsen itching and dryness. Similarly, try to use gentle fragrance-free soaps in the bath and shower as traditional soaps can be very drying. If itchy patches of eczema or other skin conditions are a problem, using a mild steroid cream short-term may help relieve inflammation and itching. Just make sure to use it sparingly and for no more than a week at a time. Overusing steroid creams can cause adverse effects, such as redness and thinning skin. Next, hydrate. Dehydration can make dryness much, much worse. Hydrate the body, hydrate the skin. Also, try to avoid overly hot baths and showers that can strip the skin of natural oils. Lukewarm or slightly warmer is optimal for dry skin sufferers. And try adding oatmeal to your bath. Oatmeal contains chemicals that help with redness and inflammation. Throw some ground up oatmeal in the tub and soak for 15 minutes. Perimenopause and menopause seem to be responsible for sucking the moisture right out of us. It can be irritating, frustrating, torturous, and sometimes painful and can definitely affect quality of life. Understanding why this is happening and trying out potential treatments until we find a combination that helps manage the symptoms is key to living our midlives as comfortably as possible. I hope this video was helpful and gave you some possible tips for alleviating symptoms. I also hope it helped you feel less alone in your struggles. A lot of us are in a similar boat and can completely empathize. How do you deal with dryness and itching in middle age? Let me know in the comments. Sharing is caring and your solutions may help others. Live your best midlives everyone and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.